Yo! Yo! Hey, we're here. We're doing it. We're back. I haven't seen you forever. Yeah, I've been, uh, it's what has it been, two and a half weeks, three it's, weeks? Well, you were in Europe. I did Austin for a while, then Europe, so it's been a long haul. How long? I mean, I've been uh, Austin, that was like a long week, right? Well, it was a while, you know, you, you land, you go straight to Kill Tony, you meet up Ooh. with Ari, you black out, you go to the mothership, then we do- uh, You do an IV or no? No, we should start doing that. <laughs> yeah. We should start doing that, but that city is it's just is naughty in the air, It's there's evil in that town. It's It's Ari. <laughs> it's just Ari. It's just Ari. No, yeah. I know what you mean though. It's like it's such a comic heavy town now that when you land, like yeah. I'm doing that trip in like a week and I'm like, "Oh, fuck, that's gonna I've never done Kill Tony." Oh, it's my first time doing it. You're going to have a blast. Yeah. Just just keep your head on a swivel cuz it's just cigarette smoke and booze and drugs <laughs> and girls in cowboy boots and 6th Street and and there's like that you know that like New York pressure of like, hey, you gotta be kind of appropriate, gotta be. That's all gone. You land in Texas and you're like, yeah, you're like Yosemite Sam all of a sudden. Yeah, no, it looks fun. And how was uh, Europe? I'm in love with Barcelona. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could do a whole episode on it, but it's like, it's so well run, it's clean, the subways are on time, the people are pretty and thin and uh the food is not bad for you we stayed on the beach you take a 10 minute subway into the city the city's beautiful there's yeah. no litter there's no graffiti ah the paella the sangria sangria we should do a sangria if we haven't done one That's we should true. we should make the sangria together. yeah we could do that like while we're talking maybe we, we do a little potion because those are fun because you can kind of freestyle with those a little oh yeah it's a little of wine a little of booze some rum some uh what do you call those alligator tears what's that some pussy juice no i'm just going <laughs> crazy here i, I have know. newt <laughs> yeah yeah but it's just like banana peels and yeah. uh it looks like flint water you know it's just got <laughs> shit floating in it yeah, you feel the same way afterwards <laughs> flint that that sangria hangover that Ooh. was like a college drink for me because you get you get that box wine cheap yes and it don't taste like box wine no and whatever maestro's done mixing it up <laughs> you throw a little oj in there triple sec i don't know what else the hell you put in there but oh yeah tequila yeah it's it's kind of like a long island iced tea that's classy it's like a foreign it long is. island it is yeah it, it's a great drink i had about a thousand of them that next day hangover with all the sugar too brutal red wine is always bad news but i'll tell you this about europe they're better than us in 90 percent of the ways but you can't get a fucking drip coffee I know what a flat white. Yeah, what of, the hell of that? a flat white. That's my. Give ex. me a fuck. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, give me a drip. Just hit me one of these or the we pitcher. Sound so trashy. Remember Richard Jenny's joke about no. uh, how the French had the croissant, and uh, we we take it here. We go, give me a croissant sandwich. <laughs> it's so fucking true. That's so. But true. It's our way. We're used to it. We sound so uncultured right now. I know, but uh, I got the Americano. I'm watching them pour water in it. I don't the, like them. The whole thing stinks. I Give love a, a, drip. a good drip. You go yes. like, a, man, there's nothing better on the road when you when you find that like indie coffee shop. Oh, yeah. The, they got the trans barista. Yes. Everyone, <laughs> that's where every trans person goes. That's their job is, a, is a, <laughs> the local artsy coffee shop. That's true. What is it about coffee that brings out the trans people? I don't know, but it's like, it, it's a, I think it's a, it's a warm community. Yes. Coffee yes. I think you're right. It's like readers and, and yeah. intellectuals that's true that's i love a good, a good indie coffee shop me too but they don't they don't have drips like you i went to a diner out there and you got to keep ordering coffee there's no pitcher you can't get the the hun you know the diner waitress with the pencil in her hair going how you doing sugar need another refill top off all gone this is how we grew up so this is what we want i'm the same way i was in rochester new york last weekend not exactly europe i fucking love yep. it I it's mean, a we, fun town. There's a boxcar diner called the High, Highland Park Diner. You been there, Matt? Yeah. Great diner. Yeah, very good. That's like a classic. And anytime I see a boxcar diner, my fucking dick perks up. Oh, I love it. My a nips boxcar. are hard. Pull it up. It, it's Oh, it's a great little spot. And uh, the waitress is just great. They have yeah. that Jamaican coffee blend, which sounds awful, Ooh. but it's great. No, I'm into it. It's uh oh yeah classic. Look Whoa! at that. Doesn't that just you look at that and you're like, this is where I want to go. This is perfect. You get that London. big fat omelet. You get the Ooh! the hash browns. Love yeah. it. And uh, great for a hangover. You go in there, you get like a every man breakfast, and you just shit it all out in like 20 minutes. Yeah, dude. We uh we were, I was a little hungover that first day actually because 
I was I was giving out Bodega Cat shots. <laughs> And by the way, we're drinking Bodega Cat right now. It, oh, it's yeah. legal in New York. It's at the fucking cellar, the stand. Yeah! Come, go to those clubs, order Bodega Cat. Hell yeah. It, we're the we're the old fashioned. You order an old fashioned in the comedy cellar, it's with Bodega Cat. How cool is that? And huh? it's coming if you're in California, you're in uh, you know Texas, Texas, Florida, Florida Georgia now. Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. We're fucking cooking, so get some Bodega Cat in the menu. One state at a time. We're like weed. Eventually we'll be everywhere, <laughs> you know. And uh, an abortion. But <laughs> Highland Park Diner, uh, killer, and uh, something about, yeah, you're right, like the, the waitress, the diner waitress. Yeah. There's something about it. It's America, baby. And these Europeans, they cannot get on board. They got all these like, fancy espresso machines and all this shit. I, I'll take a Keurig over an Americano. They're, well, this is also why their uh, people are thinner than us. Yeah. Because it's all about like small portions, a little tiny espresso. Yeah, the portions are just smaller over there. The gelato, so the little spoon. Well, you wonder why these French women are so thin. It's like Ooh. you know they drink okay. wine and eat cheese, mm -hmm. but they they don't have a shitload of it. Exactly, and they smoke cigarettes all day to kill that appetite. And they're walking, and that's what keeps that body tight. Oh in, yeah, I mean I France. I stayed at the beach and I was just like, where are the fatties? I couldn't find them. They weren't anywhere. Yeah, and I I, I look out the window of this restaurant. I see Michelle Wolf run by. And I go, get the hell out of here. You just ran into Michelle Wolf in Barcelona. We were texting a little, but then I just happened to see her. It's like a, it feels like a small town over there. And, uh, you know, she's running on the beach at like 730 at night. The sun doesn't go down to like 11. It's crazy. Weather was perfect. So I hit her up and I go to her, her room, killer room, comedy club cafe or something. I'm, oh, shit, Peter. She just lives in Spain. Lives in Spain. I met her daughter, cute, cute as a button. So cute. And uh, we hung out, we talked shit, we made fun of a few comics, and then I did a comedy clubhouse. Great room. Killer. Hot crowd. Damn, I wish I was popping into Spain on my, on my Euro oh, trip. Oh, yeah. I don't have time. It's worth the look. I mean, it's a beautiful city. It's so well run. Hey, Michelle Wolf sold out. Look at that. Um, yeah, man, I'm so bummed. So I get to the Burt Kreischer Fully Loaded tour. Yeah. And the first thing I say is like, oh, yeah. man, I wish Norman was here. And Vic Victoria, who's, you know, running everything, goes, sure. that's exactly what Norman said when he showed up. <laughs> you know, and I was like, because I feel like everyone had their other, like, yeah. half. Big J and Soder. Yeah. Or Bobby Lee. And Chad Daniels and Kelsey Cook. Yes, exactly. You know? <laughs> Bobby Lee and his boyfriend, Pillow. Uh, <laughs> Tony Hinchcliffe and... Uh, I don't know. His, I don't know. His, his Corvette. Adam Ray. Adam Ray. Retired, there you go. You know? They're buddies. You know, but, and then I had Bobby Lee the first night. We were hanging out the whole night. Atel and I were hanging out, but then I only had them for one night because Bobby fell off the top bunk and like, <laughs> broke his face. I heard. The best part is Bobby Lee is complaining. And look, no one wants a top bunk, especially like I'm tall. I don't, I, I'm kind of like, I'm all right with it, but it's not my favorite. Yeah, it's the I, worst. It, we have that fear just rolling out. Yes. Which he did, and and you got to pee. We drink all night. Then you yeah. finally get to bed. You got to pee, and now you're climbing down, and then climbing back up. I put my foot on Soder's face. He came. <laughs> I mean, it, the whole thing was tough, and it's like dark in there, and the bus is jiggling. It, that part sucks. But yeah. we great had, fest. We had David Tell. Uh, you know. Just wouldn't sleep on the bus, so he's just chain smoking in the main area, <laughs> and he's like, "I'll just wait till I get to the hotel." It's like nine hours. I know he's, he's just like, hanging out. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He sleeps in the hotel all day. The best part about the fest: the shows are great, the crowds are great. Bert hooks it up. There's barbecue one day, and the next day there's cheesesteaks, and then there's deep sea fishing or whatever. All kinds of crazy go karts. He brings a trainer with him on board. Yes. Uh, shout out Larry. That guy ruled. And then. Dude, we're doing ice bath. You do the ice bath? I couldn't do it. I love it. Really? It's awesome. You, it's like coffee. You wake the fuck up. Ugh, I, I watched Kanane do it, which I didn't expect him to do it. Yeah, Kanane's a wild man. But yeah, I, but he, but he also, I he, I heard didn't used to hang, hang, and, the, and right. he was like down to hang. Oh, good. Thing. He went. I went surfing with him. Whoa. Had a great. I'd never been. I'm a city hick. I'm not going surfing. Yeah. I'd never done it. It was great. Wow. Not a ton of Jewish surfers out there, are there? <laughs> Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, there's Moisha Greenberg, the famous uh, Hawaiian. No, I don't he, know. He's just scooping up locks. <laughs> give me that white fish. Um, he's fighting bears. Give me, come on, give me that. Uh, yeah, good for Kanane getting out. It's such a great fest. Hold on, what was I going to say? Bird hooks it up. Oh, the best part was after the show, we would all sit in a circle, smoke cigars, and David Tell would tell us stories, and Bert would counter with a story about... You know, Jay Moore, and then David Tell's like, well, what about Robert Schimmel? And all these, oh. it was just a great, 
That was the highlight. Yeah, Jelly Roll showed up. Yeah, That guy was fun as hell. He brought the house down. Holy shit. He's awesome. Great guy. Loves comedy. He likes yeah. getting zinged. That was fun. And uh, did you guys have that? Who's that short guy? The country guy. He's got a hat and, and long hair. He might have showed up after you left. I don't, I don't think I was there for him. Hugely popular guy. He's like a... That's it, Marcus, Marcus King. King. Yeah, I, I I've heard he's amazing. He's I watched a few videos. The guy's a feed. Yeah, yeah, I've listened to some. And he wants to come on. Oh yeah, really? Let's have him on. What is he like? Twenty five. He's super young. He's yeah. What I've heard is awesome. Yeah, he's great. And, but and and Bert was talking him up like crazy. But uh, feels like country's back. Like old school Merle Haggard country. Not like want to talk about me. Want to talk about my. Want to talk about G. Bye. Be. Bye. Boo. What a Toby Keith bullshit. That's the guy. We had, uh, yeah, I mean, Jelly Roll. The, Jelly Roll is just smoking weed. I heard a Jelly Roll story from back in the day. Oh, uh, hit me, Find baby. Friend, you know, back when he was doing other stuff mm -hmm. that he, uh, some guy stole his car in Nashville and took it to, like, some place. And some guy goes, uh, is this Jelly Roll's car? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I would return that if I were you. Oh. And the guy brought it right back to the exact spot he stole it. Oh, wow. Like, that's the worst. That's gotta, it's almost got to feel good. Yeah. You're like, you're like, hey, he stole my car, but he knew what the fuck was up. Damn, I can't believe he returned the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, good. He said he'd come on this, too. He wants to come on. Oh, I'd love to have him on it. He had his uh, right-hand man, like he's got a little assistant guy, and then I got to talking to him. Yeah. Woo, he's missing an eye. He's missing a finger. He's got all these crazy He had an stories. IV girl. Yeah, that's right. He hooked it up the first night. He was like, does anyone want an IV? And I was like hurting. I So, crazy story. I was supposed to go to Chaz Palminteri's one man show, but it was a night before Bert. Ah. Tour, and I was like, I was still pretty sick. Yeah. I just had a fucking head cold. And I'm like, I got to roll, I got to get a good night's sleep rolling into a fucking fest with Bert. Of course. Because I, you know, you show up, it's just booze from the second you get there. Yeah. And then I was like, fuck, I'm not going to go. I'm, I, I got to rest. I text Chaz and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm sick and I have to go out on the road tomorrow. And he goes, I totally understand. I, you know, I want you guys to see the show. So we got to find a time to see it still. Yeah. But, I uh, I get to the airport Friday morning. I see Mike Lavin, homeless pimp, who directed mm. Chaz's uh, one man show. Oh, that's show, right. And apparently looks incredible. And he goes, "Dude, you should have come." It's a classic David tell. You should have hung out, man. What happened? <laughs> oh, five minutes after you left. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Spacey came through. Oh. <laughs> He's like, we hung with Spacey all night, and yeah. I'm like, holy shit. If I was there, I bet I could have fucking talked him into coming. I just feel like I could have talked him into what we might be drunk. A hundred percent. He's a wine guy. He's gay. He probably likes us. <laughs> that would be great. Get K packs on. <laughs> Damn. That would that would be a fucking all timer. I know. Get your heart out, Piers Morgan. <laughs> we'll get two cries. <laughs> That's true. That was a weird interview, wasn't it? Oh my god. He's well, it's also tough because he's such a good actor that like I know it, it feels like you know what's the movie with Ed Norton, Primal Fear? Yeah. You know where he's just like you're just like fuck. This is such a damaged guy, and in the end, he's like, I got you <laughs> acting. <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. walked out of there like Kaiser Sose. He fixed his leg, and he was like, "Oh, I just pulled that one off," you know. Yeah. But damn, Kevin Smith. Only Jesse Smollett was a better actor. He could have <laughs> pulled this off. Woo! I'd love to have him on too. That'd be fun. Interesting. Yeah. They will just say we'll have him on, and then not. All right. But it's, yeah, uh, he'd be an interesting guest. But yeah, I was bummed I missed that. That tour was fucking fun. So fun. They really killed it. I've done it a few years. This is definitely the best year they got it. And how about that swag bag? Oh my God, I only got one thing. Thank God I took the headphones. Because <laughs> I was like, I'll just take these for the flight tomorrow. And then they're like, we'll mail the rest. They mailed my bag to Kanane. So Kanane's got uh, my stuff too. Well, he'll send it over. Yeah, maybe I'll get it. But I also, uh, that, that fucking headphones are a game changer. Oh, those, huge. Those Air Max Pros. I never use those. You put those on. Oh, yeah, noise I'm canceled. fucking, I'm reading on the flights. I'm out hearing shit. That's uh, the best. So and, so and Chad Daniels and I got buckets on two dudes. We were fucking raining. Oh dude. really? Oh, there's footage. It's on one of my things. On one of my stories. Oh no, it's in my uh, my Burt post. It's, it's on one of the slides. You see us fucking cooking. Chad's the man. He's got a new Netflix special coming out called Empty Nester. And he had killer stuff, dude. So funny. And uh, yeah, it was it was it was a good hang. Oh man, I got a wreck. Oh please. I, I read this book called. Uh, Dinner with DiMaggio, mm. and it's just about, it's just like old DiMaggio stories. This Dr. Rock Positano mm -hmm. takes out, he just takes out uh, Joe DiMaggio for dinner. They become like dinner buddies. Yeah. And I, it doesn't matter. It's probably fucking, oh, it's a Bobby Lee one probably. Yeah, it's in the slide, but it's whatever. It's not, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh-oh. Uh, but then uh, 
they become tight. DiMaggio is just like, it's fucking, he's just like epic, dude. Yeah. It's like from his falling outs with Sinatra, hates the Kennedys, Whoa. failed marriage with Marilyn Monroe because she couldn't uh, have kids. Wow. That's why he didn't do it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Italians, they need a fucking heir. That's right. That's you know? Right. And then, uh, and they have great hair, you know? That's true. But he, uh, you know, all these crazy stories, man. Like, hated Mickey Mantle, loved Gehrig. Like, Whoa. like Lou Gehrig was, like, his mentor. Like, crazy. This one story, it's Lou Gehrig basically, like, knowing something's wrong with him, but not knowing it's ALS, and he's just dropping shit. And uh, he's used to seeing this is the best player he's ever seen. Sure. This is, like, his mentor when he was a kid. Yeah. Like, 36 or something. Wow. And, uh, uh, you know, Ger I think Gehrig's 36 years old, too. I Woo. think he's... And he's... Something's wrong, and he... And he is starting to play worse because something's wrong with him. And, and in the locker room one day, he's like, something's wrong with me. I, I'm, I'm going to retire. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I, I can't stomach the thought of being taken out of the lineup or being benched. I'm going to retire. So he just starts crying in the fucking wow. dugout. And DiMaggio starts crying. You're like, that's an insane moment of like baseball history, you know? Yeah, of course. Holy moly. Fucking crazy. Two of the greats. And also, wouldn't it suck to have a disease named after you? The worst. The worst. Like, name a sandwich. What are the odds? The street. Yeah. You're going to give me the, the disease? You're going to name that after me? Like, the Heimlich is made by Jeffrey Heimlich, but he's like a hero. I got Mark Norman disease. What is it? It's basically ass cancer mixed with AIDS. <laughs> wow, this is really bad odds. Yes, exactly. I don't want that to be my legacy. There was this comic I started with, Glenn Coyle. I'm sure I've told this on the podcast. Back wow. in the day, he's passed away. He was a really funny guy. But uh, big boozer, really fun guy. Yeah. Hated Joe. Goes, my girlfriend got Lou Gehrig's disease, so I traded her. <laughs> That's just a great one line. That's a great joke. But yeah, so many good stories about DiMaggio. Just like he's a character, man. Yeah. Like old school, fucking just a ridiculous dude. I highly recommend if you like, even if you don't like baseball, it's just good good old school stories. Love know? it. Love it. Baseball used stuff. to be so big. I know. I know. I still like it a lot, but it's not it doesn't feel like it what it was, you know. No, it's totally champ. I mean, have you seen the Savannah Banana? Oh, that was fun, dude. Well, oh, you you were there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I heard their amazing live. But I'm practice. like this. But I'm like this is what baseball's come to. It's it's basically like twerking and TikToking out in the field. I don't know. It's, it's like their and one. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. They uh, they were struggling for a while and they really blew up. And I'm not trying to shit on him, but I'm like, it's pretty funny. Can we just play the game here? Is this fair? You're, you're... I mean, it's more. It's not. I mean, they're baseball players, and, and it's, it's like a summer gig, you know. Oh, okay. so they're not really playing. In... No, a lot of them are minor leaguers and stuff. They're not just. I mean, they're like good players. Oh, okay. So the minor leaguers are, you know. I don't know. It's a I... summer gig for them to make some extra scratch. Oh, all right. I thought this was the minors. I thought they were playing triple A ball here. No, this isn't like. This is like it's almost like the Globe Trotters versus oh, the Generals. Oh, that's a good way. And to there's put two it. teams, and okay. so it's like, yeah, it's not that, but it's, it's super gay. It's like Chippendales. They're shit. silly as fuck. They were really cool. We hung out with them. A bit. Really? Yeah, yeah. They because we, we went into BP. They were doing batting practice. Oh wow! I got a few fucking hits. Really? Yeah. Burke got some hits. Yeah, Burke and swing. Yeah. Okay, I take it all back. I just thought this was. I thought they were playing in the actual league. And it's I'm pretty like, fun. What are we doing here? The league's gone to shit. This guy's shirtless. Where <laughs> is there no regulations? All right, now I feel better. I was bummed we weren't doing the gigs. It would have been so fun if we were both on those shows, man. I know. That's that's why we all signed up was to be together. But you kind of get randomized. With yeah, I'm also missed. I almost I almost rolled into. Uh, Maryland just to like pop in because I had so much fun, but I couldn't oh, make yeah. it work with just other shit. But. I want to see Stavi, you know? Right, Stavi's there. I'm just glad I missed Whitney. No. <laughs> but how was uh, how were the shows? Because we had a couple of tough ones. We had an outdoor. You would make in Georgia. Yeah. I heard that was a tough one. That was a tough one. We all hated that that venue. The first thing Attell said to me when I showed up, he goes, well, look who showed up for the indoor shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those outdoor ones are. A... Palm Beach outdoors was kind of tough. Okay. But then we did indoors. We did Savannah. They were good, although I got heckled on my first fucking joke. Really? And I kind of had to change jokes. Whoa. The guy who went before me, they were doing, They did a Trump joke, and I was like, I was going to open on just whatever joke, but I was like, I got a funny Trump joke I'll open with, because it was just pretty, it's pretty down the middle and, and fun. Yeah. Uh. And I couldn't get a line out because they'll go, go Trump. Go. I'm, like, uh, I'm like, just let me tell the joke. Right. You're right. going to like the joke. Exactly. But uh, so then I just had to call an audible. But uh, yeah, Savannah was good. Okay. And then. Right uh, down. And dude. then, oh, dude, I wish I got to explore more. But we got to see a little. And uh, and then we did, West Palm was the outdoor one. That was a little tougher. 
Mm. And then we did Daytona Beach, which was killer. Oh, nice. And the best part is all the people that like you're hanging with all day, like the surfing people, they're backstage at the party after. Yeah, the, right. These surfing instructors, and they're hanging, drinking with us. I love that. Yeah, we did a South Carolina, was it Charleston? We went Red Sea Fish, what do you call it? Red Fish. I saw that. Incredible. You, you were holding something. Oh, I caught two sharks, and then there's a, if you can find it, uh, Peters, there's a... How big, how big are we talking? Bert caught a redfish. It must have been like this big. It was 30 pounds. We all had to get behind him. And, all, you know, he's shirtless, so you're getting all that back sweat. And we pulled that thing out of the water, and then we all got drunk with the, the fisherman after. I don't know if it's on my slide, but that was the uh, the River Dogs was the By the way, uh, Joe DiMaggio gets a shout out in Old Man in the Sea. Wow. And fucking Mrs. Robinson. Wow. Two iconic, you just made me think of it because of the fishermen. That's crazy. Those are two iconic things to be to be shouted out in. Yeah, you're right. Here's to you, Joe DiMaggio. Wait, no, where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Yeah. Yeah, and here's you, Mrs. Robinson. Right, that's it. I, I like that updated version, too, that Lemonheads one. I don't know that one. It's in Wolf of Wall Street, you know. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. If you can find it, I, you might have to scroll down. But either way, it's going to be a while back because you got to hand it to Bert because I did two or three days and I was like, all right, I'm a little fried. This guy goes for a month. I don't know how he does it. Oh, there I am in a fucking Jesus Oh, Christ. what is that? Sauna, yeah. Oh. Took a lot of talking to get a Jew into one of those things. <laughs> I know. I saw that that oven. Oh, that's Pete. That's Bert's right-hand man. He's great. Pete. Pete Lee Deed. All the ladies love Pete. And some of the dudes, too. Yeah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Cut to Jew concerned. <laughs> Is this going to work? Are you sure? Uh, wow. See, now this is all stuff to beat a hangover. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is as he described it, adult summer camp and me bent over. Can we get one good shot of me, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's me, like, scratching my butt. Yeah. Bert's just trying to kill that inflammation. It was great, man. Yeah, no, I'm bummed I miss a lot of people Keep on the going. other ones. Keep going. Oh, that was Sam surfing. Really? Uh, one more down. I got up on I got up my first try. Really? Yeah. Wow. Fucking yoga, dude, I'll tell you. you yeah, surfing's tough. It's really tough. And this and this is like easy waves. Like this is definitely beginner surfing. Like I'm I'm not good at it, but I did get up on the first one. There we go. Bert Bert is pretty athletic. He's so athletic. Yeah, he's just good at most sports. Is that Daytona? Yeah, nice. Daytona was sick. And of course, as we're leaving, they're like, yeah, it's the number one. Uh, there's Canaan. Hey, that counts. They said it's the number one. Um, shark? Yeah, shark attack. Oh, great. For capital. Oh, here we go. That's me. In the pool. But I got up the first one. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah! Oh, my God. Surfberg. The water break, I think. That was my instructor. Not too bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, was... <laughs> I think I said something about like uh, the sodium. Oh, that's funny. No, I was hurting. I had to get out. I was like nauseous from from booze the night before. Oh yeah. Just that fucking, just that seawater. You're like fuck. There's the. That's one of the sharks. Oh, look at you. Got. Is that um, soda. If you keep going, I think there's a redfish in there. Oh, look at you. Yeah, we're all hung over. Good times. That's me going, you like that guy? Really? You think he's funny? <laughs> is this a fully loaded page? Oh, yeah. It is cool. Or is this Burt's? Fully loaded. Okay. Oh, man, what a crew. Very good choices of people. Adam Ray's awesome. Matt McCusker. I know. Yeah, Matt, I missed a lot of Stavros. people. Stavros. Yeah, I never hung with McCusker, really. I love to hang with him. Or, and, you know, I never see Adam Ray or, or you rarely see Whitney. It's like a lot of people just never see it. Yeah. Simmons is the man. It's, it's, yeah, it's a good deal. Cook was catching a ton of stuff. A lot of weed. There it is. It's nice because usually on the road we only catch HPV. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, good time. That's at fucking 11 in the morning, by the way. Yeah, wow. Just getting after it. Then but you, you, you wake up early on those days. I just don't sleep on the bus, dude, especially in the top. Soda and Jay, those guys are smoking so much weed. Yeah, true. Everyone's smoking that fucking... Jelly roll weed too, which Woo. is like that's the shit that'll fuck you up. Oh yeah, that, that I mean, seeing Bert fucked up. Oh yeah, Bert. By the end of the night, he is wrecked, and it's fun to watch. Yeah. He'll tell you anything. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good times. 
All right, well. Yeah, we, we covered it, but that's, that's good stuff, man. So, yeah, fully loaded. If you can go, you should definitely go. It's really a treat. Hell of a feather. There's nothing out there like it. Hey, oh, that's oh, a oh, cute pooch. little bitch. Yeah, Winnie. I wasn't cheating. Uh, <laughs> Winnie didn't even see. There you go. So, yeah. I look bloated time. as fuck. Look how fucking swollen my face looks from the booze. That's what happens out there. Oh, oh my wow. God. Look I at am, that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I gained five pounds in my face. Oh, Disgusting. yeah. Disgusting. I gained five in Europe just eating all the you bread. Look the same. Well, the bread there is better for you. Like, I eat bread here and I'm like, I got some gluten issues over there. I'm wolfing down croissant witches and going nuts. <laughs> what, uh,. When you're running a business, you want to be able to sell to anybody <laughs> anywhere in the world. Shopify is you covered with their global commerce platform. It's easy to use and will take your business to the next level. In addition to killing it in the online space, they have an in-person POS system, too. However you want to sell, you can do it with Shopify. We love Shopify. The I'm best. on there all day. The wife's on there. Ian's on there. It's the best. you got to get on it. The Internet's best converting checkout. It's up to 36% better than the other guys. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, so you know you can trust them. Huge brands like Rothy's and Brooklinen use it every day. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash drunk, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash drunk now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash drunk. Get on it. Love it. You deserve comfortable shorts, and Chubby's has you covered. With super stretchy shorts and swim trunks and three different inseam lengths and tone of colors and patterns, Chubby's will be the only thing you wear this summer. Mark, you love these. I I, I don't know if we got these. I'd love a pair. These look great on you. Your, your yams I, look delightful. That's all I wear, Chubby's. I, the, the bathing suit, the, the shorts, the shirts. I, I wish I was wearing one right now. I'm a I huge want, fan. I want some swim trunks, Chubby. Send, me, send some my way, please. I'm going to wear them. They're the best. I'll get a little kiddie pool for that new terrace. Yeah. If you really want to show off, they have tearaway swim trunks. Tearaway? Whoa. Just, just my cock. <laughs> no, that skin. sounds good. With, <laughs> with briefs underneath for a dramatic costume change or throw on their American flag overalls for the summer. Complete your summer wardrobe with chubbies, polos, button-ups, t-shirts, and tank tops. They even have sweatshirts, underwear, and socks so you can wear chubbies Ooh head to toe. Whether you're getting dressed up for a work day or uh, a work weekend or a getaway, Chubby's has you covered. For a limited time, Chubby's is giving We Might Dr Be Drunk listeners 20% off your order with our code DRUNK at ChubbyShorts.com. That's code DRUNK at ChubbyShorts.com. Support the show and tell them we sent you. Don't blend in with the crowd. Stand out with Chubby's. Here, here. Any peeves or anything? I got peeves. I got Rex. I'm yeah. all over the place. Lovely. First off, I got to say, the debate was on while I was in Europe, and that, oh, I felt no. very far away. Oh, my God. Because I was just like looking at all the tweets, and List had one of the best tweets. He about killed it. About the, the live. Oh, my God. Look, that was perfect. Yeah, so good. And uh, I'm all I'm all off time-wise, but I'm finally back now. But That debate was a fucking mess. That was I bad. I mean, this is coming out a couple weeks after, right? Because we're doing the other yeah. one first. Yeah, but I mean, that was fucking bad. Yeah, that was a tough time. Then it makes you think, like, you guys all said he was healthy and sharp. So now are you lying? Then what else are you lying about? So it's well, a lot, a probably. <laughs> Everything. It's all lies. It's all media. But um, good to be back. Fun yeah. time. We're living in the summer. We're making it happen. And now we're here and we're queer. So, peeve. How about this one? Yeah. You ever have a thing where you can't get something to work and then you show a guy, like, this never works for me, and the time you show him, it works? Well, yeah, well, yeah that's a that's a pee for sure. You ever had that where you're like, this fucking thing it's, won't it's open? It's dick? <laughs> what, uh, what are you showing him? Yeah. I know what you mean, though. That's like... Like, this 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 file will not open or, or this won't download, and then you're like, look, look, watch, and then it downloads. And you look like a jerk. And you look like an asshole. I hate that. That's a, that's a good peeve. That happens to me all the time. Because that's kind of like, it's like a dumb luck peeve. Yes, yes. So you're bittersweet because you're like, I'm glad it works. But I'm also like, I swear to God, I tried 50 times. It didn't work. That's a that's a good peeve. Thank you. I got I got Remind me of one, actually. The, you ever you ever do, and I do this sometimes, but it still bothers me when other people do it. Hey, where's the, uh, and you find it before you finish the sentence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's the uh, TV remote? And then you're holding, I'm like, all right. Oh, yeah, women I, hate that one. Women hate that. But I, 
But I've had women women do it that's too. That's true. That's true. My lady will be like, "Where the hell is this?" And I'm like, "Well, you got to look first. Yeah. You can't just get mad and not look. You got to start looking and then ask me." It's we're so used to it's, we're worse now because we're so used to instant gratification. Like you, 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 your phone doesn't work immediately. Like, what the fuck? I know everything exactly. you want immediately now. Think about food. You yeah. have to like go everything delivery. It's it's just. We become so fucking impatient. I know, and I know I'm gonna I'm in the minority here, but I don't use Uber Eats. I don't do Ever? it. Ever? I rarely, maybe twice a year, three times a year. I go out to the grocery, I go pick it up. Do you cook? The lady cooks, but uh I go get a, like a rotisserie chicken, I get cans of tuna, I get I love cans eggs. of tuna. Me too. Tuna cans of tuna is like the most simple pleasure. Great. You just pop it open, I throw a little everything seasoning on it. Yes. A little olive oil. You got yourself a nice little snack. I don't even take it out of the can. Me neither. I right. it out of the can. I, that, that's one of my go-tos. Me dude. too. Why dirty a plate? Just yeah. pop the lid off. I give a little piece to the cat, and I wolf it down. <laughs> this is real white trash. I'll put a little ranch on it and then mix it It does in. taste good. Oh, I got great. some jalapeno ranch I throw in there Ooh, sometimes. That, maybe. Not my go-to, but it's fucking good. That does sound good. I'm going to get on that. That's What does what May cook? She good, makes a hell of a like a bolognese. She does this minestrone Damn. soup that's incredible. She makes pork chops. She's she's a great cook. I lucked out, and she likes to cook, so it's not one of these like is, getting the kids. It's satisfying to cook. It's great. I rarely do it, but when I do it, I'm like, why don't I do that more? I know you're in the your hands are getting in stuff, and you're smelling things, you're cutting things. It's good for the brain, I think. Yeah. The only problem is those dishes after. That's a bitch when you got the pile of dishes. Do you have a dishwasher. Sink. Well, I call her May, but yeah, uh, I do, but it's yeah. not a great dishwasher, so it's one of the ones where you got to take shit out and clean it again. That's, that's What's the point? I know, exactly. Does the new place have one? Yeah, thank God. New place, so you must be pumped. I'm pumped August 1st. How about this? Yeah. This is, this is what it comes with owning a home. I'm in Barcelona, voicemail, hey, this is your neighbor, Pearl. Uh, she's like an 80 year old lady who's lived in Brooklyn her whole life. She's like, we're, we're swingers. We want to know if you want to <laughs> suck and fuck your neighbors. I wish that was it. <laughs> she goes, Hey, a tree fell out of your yard and fell into our yard and oh. broke our fence. And oh, I was so you're like, like a, you're, you're really in a home. I'm in a home, baby. I'm a homo. Oh, no. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, Oh, I, I don't care. I'm like, Oh, good for you. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like knee deep in paella. You gotta, I got my you gotta, feet in the you sand. You gotta be like Eastwood in Torino. You just gotta just chill on your porch with a fucking gun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like The Last of Us, and I'm having bacon. <laughs> and, uh, so I was like, Oh, what? Well, handle it. Whatever you gotta do. She's like, Well, it's your tree, so you have to pay for our fence. And I was like, Oh, she's like, You gotta get a tree guy to take the tree out. And I'm like, Oh, so now I'm in Barcelona Googling tree guy, and it's way overpriced, and I'm like, maybe I'll just come over and, and move it. And she's like, well, you need a chainsaw. And I'm like, ah. So I finally find this Mexican dude, Carlos, does the whole thing for 200 bucks, goes back there, cuts it up. She's like, he's in our home. He's eating our food. <laughs> he like, raped our daughter. Yeah. I was like, let him work. This is how he does it. This is his process. <laughs> and uh, so he went in there, and he called me. He's like, it's all finished. And I go, great. Here's your money. And uh, now <laughs> we got to work. They're all, they're all tied up. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the wolf. Wolfo. <laughs> Lupa. But he goes in there, and uh, I think that's wolf in Spanish. Loop. Lubo, <laughs> but yeah, he went in there and he he handled it. So thank God for Carlos. That's wild, dude. Yeah. So those I, are the things you got to look forward. I to. had my move, dude, and I uh, I movers. I hired but, movers. I only hired two. I did. I you know I did some stuff too, but it's so funny. They're just they, no matter what they complain. I know. I no know. Matter, I'm like it's in the building. They're like well, you only only a service elevator. I'm like it's just a few fucking flights in an elevator. <laughs> I know. And they're like, well, this wasn't, you know, the, the, this is the moving tactic. They're always like, you didn't say there was going to be this. I'm like, boxes? <laughs> I did say there were going to be boxes. It's so shady. But they're always like, well, those, they, I think they have to act annoyed and it, it does get you a bigger tip. Oh, smart, smart. Well, there's all these union rules. Like, well, if you're going to be moving in a building, it's got to be between noon and two or you got to pay a fine. And if you don't use the freight elevator, you go to jail. There's all these crazy yeah, things. Yeah, New York's fucking annoying. I hate these fake rules. Uh, but yeah, that's <laughs> but one you must, you must be pumped, though. I'm pumped. I'm glad to be back, and I feel replenished. I did I did a writing session. Well, we did one yesterday. Yeah, we bounced some bits. That's we should have saved them for the show. I know. What are we doing? I don't I don't know if I was thinking straight. Me neither. But it, it was fun bouncing. We haven't done it off pod in a while. Super helpful. We got to. Yeah, do I think that. I got a couple. Every oh, I got a peeve. Hit me. Ooh, this is a peeve. Oh, baby. The leg cramp wake up. 
Oh! Is there anything worse? Like right here? Yes. So, there, there, sometimes you get one in a toe and you just can't. Yes. The, the, I get this one a lot, the second to big toe. Oh. This is a this is a real drinker's pee. <laughs> is your body shriveling up? Your yeah. Body's trying to, but dude, I also, I sleep under a weighted blanket. Mm. I love, a, I have a really good one. It's not too heavy, but it's like, it's nice. A good weighted blanket. Oof. And, uh, How you doing? But when you're under there and you have a cramp, you look like a fucking mental patient. <laughs> You're just like rolling back and forth, That's you know. True. It's awful, but uh, it's the worst. I yeah, I hate hate the cramp. But you you got to drink water and you got to have a fucking banana. It's banana, like, like you were told when you were seven years old. Potassium, but the Charlie horse is the worst when you're like go right in the back of the calf, and you got to get up and walk around like like an old man in the middle of the night, and it's the only way to get rid of it. Yeah, it's usually dehydration. Yeah, That's what they say. That's a peeve. Good one. You got a peeve? Yeah. Uh, how about this guy? The guy who's throwing out options, he's like, we can either do this or we can do that. What do you? Which one do you want to do? And whatever one you pick, he goes, well, I should probably do the other one. <laughs> yeah, what is that? And I'm like, well, why'd you ask me? It could be anything. It could be a movie. could be anything. Hey, you want to get Chinese or Japanese? And I go, well, I can do some sushi. Let's do some sushi. Yes, it's a Monday. Sushi's not great in a Monday. Yes, that's the guy. I fucking hate that guy. That's the guy. Why'd you give me the option then? Yeah, just say you want pasta. We'll get pasta. We'll be on our way. But he's got to go, ah. Sushi, it's a little early for fish. You're like, well, you threw it out there. I, I have that all. Oh, geez. When you're with your girlfriend or wife or whatever, when yeah. you're just hanging out and deciding on food, I hate the person that nixes every idea. I'll be like, here's five things I can do. Pick one of them. Yes, okay. yes. And then they're just like, oh, now I got to pick. I'm like, I, well, I can pick. They're like, no, no, let me think about it. <laughs> or you do the one where you're like, how about Chinese? They're like, I could do, I could do Japanese. Uh, all right, well, how about uh, Mexican? They're like, eh, I could do Italian. And then you're like, why don't we just order two separate? We can't even agree yeah, on this. Exactly. Well, that's the problem with the, the vacation, because I'm with her family. So I can't the, believe the, you fucking did that. I mean, it, this was my gift to her. But you know? I, I mean, this is getting you out of some, you know, you're going to miss a wedding anniversary to a spot at New York Comedy Club, I feel like. Exactly. I, I built up some points. What? Women don't give you credit. You can't really get credit with a woman. You know, you can't use credit later. Be like, hey, remember when I went on that trip? They're like, that was then. This is now, motherfucker. But that's yeah, women. That's true. But the hard part was her family likes to do everything as a group. You know, they'll be like, who's hungry? And I'll go, I'm hungry. And they'll go, all right, let's see. And then one guy goes, oh, actually, I'm not hungry. So we got to wait on food. And then she's like, well, maybe I'll just go and sit there. No, we can't have you just sitting there. It's too How many weird. people? It's like six people with kids. So eight, it's, eight so it's her, her parents? Parents, brother, sister, their spouse, two kids. Yeah, it was probably, was it nice though? It was great. It was great. We had a great time. And, but you, and you get along with their family. They're way better than mine. They're like normal people. Uh, they're like a family from the suburbs. They they get along. They're nice. Uh, my family's crazy. So it's like a treat to be with their family. I have no qualms about it. But the group thing, we're, we're lone wolves. We're lobo. You know, we're out there. We're living. I, if I want a coffee, I'll just go up and get a coffee. But she, the, the mom will be like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go get a coffee. She's like, alone? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to go walk around, maybe listen to a podcast. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go to the like, bathroom alone too later. Get used to it, lady. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, do you need anything? You, you want us to go with you? I'm like, no, I'll just get the coffee. But then you don't want to seem like I don't like you. So you need like, a moment. I'm the same way. Totally. I need, I need a moment removed, and it's not rude. It's just like you need to recharge. Yes, I yes. need a moment. Dude. They don't have that. There's people I'll be with, and they talk so much. I'm like, I just... I don't want to be rude, but I just need a moment where I'm not forced to respond. I need yes. a moment where I just like kind of am in my head for a second. Hundred percent. There's, I think, types of people who are just on and on and on. There's types of people who live in their head. Yeah. And those are quiet people. Right. And I think we are at our heart introverts. No doubt about it. We we I like socializing. Yeah. But I need that time to get away. Yes. You know? They don't have that. They're very like, oh, you're going. I'll go with you. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I was going to go alone and recharge. Yeah. But they think, why would you want to go alone? Are you crazy? I'll go with you. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, There the are opposite. people like that. Why would you? You don't understand? I, yeah, I know. But I spent a lot of time in the bathroom, you know, like I would I would go, oh, I got to do a phone call. And I would just walk around. Well, yeah, you, you notice when you're around those people, you, you take a 40-minute shit here and there? Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And then they get weird about that. They're like, "Where'd you go?" And you're like, Do you, "Are you sick of us? Are you mad at?" Us? I'm like, "No, it's it's a me thing." I'm yeah, just no, a, it's, I'm a, it's a recharge. You can yeah. like people need a recharge. I, I got plenty of peeves. So Please. It's been a minute. Um, it's funny you mentioned Bert with the back sweat mm. because I've, I've been playing some pickup ball in the park. The shirtless guy. Yeah. What are you doing? That's tough. They're like a wet seal. 
Oh my God. You slide right off them. That, those guys take their shirt off in American History X and you see the swastika. I'm more annoyed by just the shirtlessness. <laughs> I'm more annoyed by the fact that if you're going to back into me and I'm like, because that's when it gets, they post you up. Now you're like, now I'm fucking gross. That's this true. Is, it's too intimate. It's way too in. It's way too wet. Uh, I'm with you. That that's it ruins the game because it's another element now. It's yeah. not just blocking you and getting and, and posting up. It's like, oh, you're slippery, and now I'm wet. I don't want to taste a male oh, stranger. Oh god! Yeah, that's the classic. There it is. That's the classic. That's perfect. Man, Tropic Thunder was on TV the other day. Oh, Downey great. Jr. Just, I mean, it is so fucking insane that he did that, and it's so funny. Top notch. Tom Tom Cruise killed it. Downey he killed it. Jack Black. Everybody brought the heat in that movie. Yeah. Um, well, wait, what would you say, Bex? Oh, I used to bang a gal in Little Italy. This girl was way out of my league. She saw me do a set. I had a good set. Super hot lady. But she had this great apartment in Little Italy with no AC. Ugh. So there was this one summer we would, we'd, I'd go to her house all the time and we'd, we'd bang all night. But I would get so sweaty that she would put her hands around me during sex and she would go, oh! Because my back was soaked, and I was like, "Well, you don't have AC. We're we're fucking going at it over here." Ugh. So she was. Uh, we I ended up ending it because I was too sweaty. That is fucking insane. So the back sweat is no joke. I'm I'm that's, with you. That's fuck. I'm annoyed for you. I would have. I'd get towels in there. I'd put towels on my back so she could hold on to me. And she was a nice piece too. Oh my god, was she something? Damn. I still follow her on Instagram just for just like a little ego boost, like. Every once in a while, your girl will be like, who's this person? They just check who you follow. And you, it's hard to be like, eh, some chick I fucked in uh, 2013. And, like, oh, and you yeah. still follow her. You're like, what's well, weird to unfollow? I don't yes. know. I mean, there's a few that I just follow. Cause I'm like, yeah, we hooked up a few times. Then you're like, eh, this is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, that is true. She's married with kids now. I'm yep. like, yeah. Same with her. We had a fun night in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Remember the Alamo. <laughs> but yeah, no, I get it. You got to do it. Just a little. Oh yeah, that was a that was a wild time. It was there. a good time. Yeah, and she's like a animal rights whatever now. So I'm like, oh look, she's in Africa saving the the wildebeest or whatever. <laughs> so you get the the animal photos as well. That and you're like, fun. hey, I fucked a nice lady. Uh, yeah, it is not. Like, yeah, I've made some good decisions. Yeah. I mean, she rescued me. Um, <laughs> what about this? This is a peeve, and it's a little, it's a, don't even look at my followers, you sick fuck. <laughs> Damn, you're good. I, I didn't, I was looking, I'm like, what is he doing? I'll send it to you later. Detective Peters, hot All in right. the case. Yeah. How about this for a peeve? This is a little broad. This is a big yeah. umbrella. Yeah. The Passport. We, we've got 2024 here. We got vision retina scan. We got fingerprint. We got uh, breathalyzer in the car to start it. We still need this dumb I, I hate book. the breathalyzer in the car. To, I remember they sent the guy to fucking pick me up from a comedy club with one of those. Oh, really? And Ooh. I was like, wow, thanks for sending the A-team to get me. <laughs> this guy can't fucking drive in a... He's pulling hey. over like, hold on, I got to pull over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's a bad look. But uh, yeah, get, well, I gotta I gotta have this antiquated little Koran with me everywhere I go. This fucking <laughs> dumb pamphlet to show that I we got everything else. Get get it on my phone. There it is. Now you forget that thing. Oh, you forget this thing. You're ruined. It's like uh, the Jews with the papers. They it's weird. Canceled. It, it is weird because uh, everything else is digital. You're right. The airport. It's a. It's so fucking annoying. I know. And I'm just, the whole time I'm like, uh, do I have it? And I left but it in my bag. It's going to turn into giving up more freedoms, though. With that. Uh, like, the stuff mm -hmm. like that, I mean, we're already doing it. That's the thing. It's like, look, you, for, to cut the line, you know, you're right. We give our retinas. We give our fingerprints. You go there. You give everything. Like, and, and guess what? That line's now too long. I know. Well, it's it's going to be the next one. It's going to be like our dick print. <laughs> you know, you're gonna have to keep giving up freedoms. True. And you're like, you're like, wait a second, you're not circumcised. You're like, fuck, run. You know, it's gonna be. <laughs> They're on to me. Yeah, that's true. I guess you're right, but I feel like they got it all already. You know, it's yeah. like when they go, the government's reading our emails. I'm like, yeah, and your TikTok, and your DMs, and your location, and they know how to give you ads. So it's the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. The Bodega Cat. Yeah! All over New York City now, and your home state, or we're coming soon. Get it online as well if you don't have it in your state. BodegaCatWhiskey.com. Good stuff, dude. Oh, yeah. Um, I got a wreck. Yeah? Now, this is this is maybe about more about my anal than your anal. Instagram. Get ready for this one, Peters. 
Cody Tucker. The whole the whole page is just this guy pulling out fun facts out of his ass. Okay. Now let, let's find a good one here. Now, oh, I've seen this guy. This guy's great. He I does, like this guy. He does yeah. movie stuff. He does phrases. He did one. He'll like connect the dots in weird ways. Yeah. It'll be like you know Kelsey Grammer related to Hitler, and you're like, what? Right. That's not that, but it's like stuff like you know. I just watched one today where he goes. Uh, in England, back in you know two hundred years ago, they used to sell these piglets. That's the one. They used to Let's sell these little it piglets, on. and that will play it. Now, piglets notoriously difficult to handle, squirmy little bastards. So the people selling piglets would put them into a little sack as a way to contain them. The people buying the piglets that were in a sack weren't able to open it at the market because the piglet might get out and run away. So they would purchase the sack piglet and take it home. When they got home, they would open the sack and find out that it was in fact not a piglet. The person allegedly selling these piglets would have pulled a fast one on them and put a cheaper animal inside of the sack. Wait for now, it. Now at this time, a very common stray animal to find in London was a cat. Okay. So to find the truth of the deception turned into the phrase to let the cat out of the bag. Wow. So a couple hundred years ago in England, people used to go to That's a market amazing. to buy I live for this shit. One I of the love animals that they would these buy fun would be facts, where the whole thing started. I mean, these phrases had to come from somewhere. And I relate to emptying my sack and uh, regretting it later. So <laughs> definitely. No, it's, that's, a, that's, a, that's so interesting. I love stuff like that. Yeah, and who too. knows if it's even true, but it sounds true. I think, yeah, I think he's got Is that can we Can we fact check that? Uh, yeah, good question. I mean, that is... Uh, let the cat out of the bag. So that so it has a bad association for sure. Yes, yes. And then it just morphs over time and I and we, we hold on to these phrases, which I love. One was uh this guy pissed off everybody in town, so they stopped talking to him, they kinda ostracized him. The guy's name was Jeff Boycott. So that's wow. where you get boycott. So it just came it just comes it's gotta come from somewhere. Damn. So I wanna do a comedy show, some style of this with comedy mixed together. I don't know how to do it. Damn, man, that's that's I like that. It's interesting. I mean, that's an interesting guy to have on the pod and just tell stories like this. Oh yeah, he's got great movie ones. Like this part was supposed to go to this guy, but he got uh, the flu, so then it went to him, and then he fought him or whatever. And Those then, are always interesting. The ones that like you just missed on. Yes, but then sometimes it's for the best, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it's like you're like fucking Robert Redford and The Godfather. Right. That was right. one that was supposed to happen. We totally. Like, what? Yeah, Will Smith was supposed to be Neo. That was a big one. I could have seen that working, but I think Keanu was perfect. Oh, totally. I totally. Could, that one's like, yeah, he did it for because he did Wild Wild West instead. Right? He wanted that song. Yeah, but think about how much money he probably made off that song. That's true. That's true. He probably was like, do I get a song in Matrix? And they're like, red pill, blue pill. He's like, nah, <laughs> this doesn't work. Right. No, Wild Wild West. Yeah, that song slaps. All right. <laughs> but yeah, how about uh, what's her face in that? Selma Hayek. <laughs> Yeah, I never saw it. It's bad. It's horrible, but she looks great. Yeah, she still looks great. I know. What's going on? J Lo looks great. the The tides are turning. Yeah. Money, We're, money's good. Money, that's money, what it money is, helps I guess. you stay young to a certain point. Yeah, Penelope Cruz looks great. They're all hanging at Julia Roberts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Madonna, she fucked it. Now it's funny because if you get surgery, you look worse. I feel like the people who didn't get, get surgery. They're getting better surgery. I guess they're that's all getting work done. Yeah, that's true. You ever seen Jennifer Connelly? Looks better now. She's fucking hot. Underrated hot lady, Jennifer Connelly. Not by me, but I, yeah, I know what you mean. She's not talked about in the in the list and the annals. But she's hot. Oh, yeah. She's in a lot of... Fuck, she was just in some movies. She was in Top Gun, the new one. Man, I just watched... Did I wreck Dark City? No. Did I wreck that, Peters? Uh, not maybe. I don't know. Um, I might have. Wait, she's in that, isn't she? Look up the movie Dark City. I think she's in it. Maybe I'm wrong. Dark City. Hmm. What's that? Harlem? All right. Did <laughs> I make that joke already? Yeah, she's in it. It's good. Watch the director's cut. Kumail Nanjiani, shout out. He wrecked this movie. Oh, really? And he was like, you like, he goes, you you like noir and I like sci-fi and this is like a hybrid. Ooh. So like give it a shot. It's really good. Okay. It's a, it's a weird noir about, uh. This kind of dystopian city. It's it's cool. All um, right. Oh, it's ninety eight. That's a good year. And watch the and watch the director's cut because the other one has like a narrator mm. that I guess a studio force and it kind of just dumbs it down and gives stuff away. So I watched the director's cut. It's a little more 
it's a more of a slower burn. You're a little bit like, what's going on here, but in a good way. All right, I'll check it out. It's a cool movie for sure. Uh, I just watched The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. That's a fucking good Woo! one. Sergio Leone. What a killer. It, yeah. it took two watches because it's three hours and change. I got to rewatch it because it's been a minute. but It's like the Western. Yeah. All the tropes and cliches of a Western come from that. That used to be my ringtone in high school for when my mom would call. No way. Because I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> I'd be out drunk at a bar and I'd be like, me, me, me. oh, fuck. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. I think I might make it my walk on music now because you know, we're joke slingers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of fun. That's fun. Pull, play that music if you can there, Peter. It's just a, a great hook. I ended up Googling all of it, and it's a great history. What's his name? Ennio uh, Morricone? Is that who did this I song? think it is. Yeah, Ennio Holy Morricone. shit. Well, How'd he you did, pull that out? Well, I just watched Fistful of Dollars with Eastwood, and that's a really fun one, too. And that, it's got great music. That came out before this, I think. Yeah. This is like the end. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think that was like 65. It's good. It holds up. And it's got great shootout scenes. Wow, you got the guy, Mary Cohn. That's incredible. What a pull. Too bad that can't get you laid. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Dude, I can tell you this shit. That's so good. I don't even know how they made that noise. By the way, that was Eli Wallach, the Jewish a Jew, guy, a Jew playing, playing a Mexican. That's when Jews took Mexicans' jobs. <laughs> Eastwood is just so cool being a badass. I know. He's so damn handsome. He's like a Helmsworth back then. Yeah. Six four. Yeah, he's a handsome, great jawline. Oh, badass. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Fistful of Dollars is a really good score, too. All right. But I'll this check is like the out. classic. Yeah, I'll, I'll rewatch this, too. This There's is good. So many twists and turns. Like, the movie just keeps going and the Civil War gets involved. It's, it's crazy. fucking awesome. Eastwood is fucking legendary. And, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, Unforgiven is up there, too. Oh, yeah. Unforgiven's pretty great. Killer. I went to the Criterion Closet the Ooh, other day. Baby. Which was like, <laughs> for a film geek, I'm like, this is fucking cool. I, I got to take five movies with me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you get to pull them out of the closet. What? Is that where they keep the gay ones? It's just the birdcage at uh, <laughs> Brokeback. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah, where yeah. was this? Uh, it's on, like... 18th Street or something. What? That's yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah. I got to, uh, I didn't do like a video. I just, they took a polar to me in there and I just got to pick some out. But I took, they let me pick five and I took, I took a, I took Thief because I'm like, I've seen this movie. Sure. I love it. Sure. I took Clute because I've never seen it. Clute. It's I don't know. Donald Clute. Sutherland and Jane Fonda. It's supposed to be good. I've wanted to see it. So I grabbed that. Okay. I took Scorsese shorts. Whoa. Because I was like, she was like, these are cool and they're hard to find. So like, great. Mm -hmm. Took them. And then I took uh, The Magnificent Ambersons, got a little Orson Welles in there because I've never fucking watched it. I okay. Know, check this out. And I got one more. Oh, Sweet Smell of Success. Uh, old New York, baby. Classic. Yeah, I got some oldies in there. Well, so you, it's like a library. You, you take them out and return it? No, I get to keep them. What? Yeah, and, and you get to pull them out and they have like doubles, but then they ask which ones you take to like restock. Uh, so you okay. can go in there and just grab them. But yeah. Whoa. DVD? Yeah. Wow. It's kind of fun to have a DVD in yeah. your head. I was like, man, this fucking, it's funny that that feels old now. That's like the new, you know, oh, totally. record or whatever. Right, right. So how do you how do you get on board with this? You got to pay a monthly thing? or No, I well, I pay to do the streaming service, uh -huh. but, I, but no, my because it was to promote the special. It was just like to take a picture in the closet. Oh, that's you know. great. Yeah, yeah. New, oh, by the way, new special out. Amazon, you've changed uh, streaming now, so, so give it a Ooh, very exciting. Hope, hope you're enjoying it. And uh, and give it a yeah. like and a share and a comment. Yeah. I don't know how Amazon works. I don't think you comment. I think you can share or you can definitely thumbs up it. Yeah. I always remember Andy Kindler used to do that joke where he's like, I, I couldn't get on Amazon, but you can see my new special on UPS ground shipping. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. There it is. Yeah, You've cool. changed. Very noir. Good photo. Yeah. Cool font. I like the suit. Yeah, it's fun. That's great. Uh, streaming now on Amazon Prime Woo! Video. It's, it's a good time. It's a great hour. I've seen it. I can't wait to watch. I just like to have these on at my house in the background, like friend specials. You know, do something. Yeah, oh, Salakis took that one, and he took the other photo, but yeah. Woo, baby. Age shot. Yeah, had my scotch. No my, tie. Actually, that was Bodega Cat. It wasn't even, it wasn't scotch. Yeah. No tie. The tie is too formal. It's a little mud. I like it's, a loose tie. It, no, it, so for, it, for, it depends who it is. For me, it doesn't. It didn't feel right. But mm -hmm. Vita rocked the tie in his. But oh yeah, um, hell let me, yeah. Let me see what other peeves I got cooking, bud. Um, wah, wah, wah. 
Ooh, I got, this is a rough one. So we're we're flying back from Rochester, which is already a brutal flight. Mm. And the flight there was like, it was a hot three and a half hour delay, which Mm. is like, luckily it's a short flight, so it doesn't really fuck, but it it does fuck your day up a little bit where you're like, this shouldn't be a full day. Uh, Yes. Just going upstate. So, you know, me, uh, Gary, we're at the airport. We go to the thing. It was the classic board, and then we hit the D board. Yep. And because it's a little plane, they give you the, the pink tag. Yeah, hate the tag. Hate the tag, but you got to do it. So I took it, do the thing, we get on, and then they go, you got to get off. So I go, when are we coming back? The guy goes, I don't know. Ah. And I go, well, it's not showing on the phone. He's like, well, yeah, just come back an hour. I'm like, well, we don't want to just chill by the gate. We want to go to the lounge or get a bite or something if, we, if it's going to be delayed. Sure. He's like, two hours. I'm like, all right, but it's not showing up. Yeah. And then- uh. We're like, all right, you're like, trust me. I'm like, all right. Oh, boy. So I, we, we don't trust him, but we, we rolled the dice. We went to the lounge, came back. Then we go back to the lounge. He goes, it, it is. All right. Go away. Come back on the uh, flight. We took off the pink tag. We didn't wait to keep the pink tag. Oh, uh, I so never he's like, keep it. He's like, you took off the tag? And I was like, I I, I didn't know if it was going to be the same gate. I didn't know if yeah. it was going to be. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And he goes, you don't throw away the tag. I'm like, is there a shortage? <laughs> are you, are you running low on the tag? Yeah. And he was just like really annoyed by it. I'm like, you don't get to be a dick after the, it was a three hour delay. Yes. Like, Come on. Yeah, you got to be blow me a little bit. Yeah. You know, you should be a little apologetic. Yeah. Wow. The Fucking tag. the tag. And then on the flight back, here's a second peeve, flying peeve, where, uh, we get the, the flight attendant who thinks he's a fucking comedian. Oh, yeah. It thinks it's open mic night. It keeps, and, and by the way, Cranked it all the way up. Oh. I don't know if there's a volume switch on this thing, but Gary's like doing this. Yeah. <laughs> just like poor Gary. He's like, he's just in the corner <laughs> doing this. The guy's going, Ooh, I messed that up. I guess that's uh, the hamster died on the wheel. I'm like, Is that an exp- I don't think that's an expression. <laughs> he's like making shit up, trying to be funny. I'm like, What is this shit? Yeah. yeah. And there was another delay that way, too. I'm like, that's, that's a, Those short flights are the worst flights because you're in the little plane. Yep. It's shaky. There's always something wrong. There's never like a simple short flight, I feel like. I know. And the announcement. Are getting longer, I feel like. So, on a short flight, it's like announcement, announcement. Don't use the laboratory, smoke detector, finagle, fit hand, bad, bad. And then it's like, all right, he shut the fuck up. And did you see the debate? Yeah, Uh, yeah. yeah. You get like two seconds of silence before they go, all right, descent, pull a bucket, you said, put your tray up, your seat back. You're like, God damn, I got no. No flight time because it was just all talking. It's it makes me crazy. That's why I would for a long time I would watch the movie on my laptop because they can't pause the screen. Oh, on the laptop. that would good drive me. Call. You're in the best scene of The Departed. All of a right. sudden they're like, "Ooh, we're at a cruising altitude." You're like, "Who gives a fuck?" <laughs> yeah. What are you on your period? We got ten knots on the starboard bow. You're like, "God damn it!" He's about to hit the guy with the glass. It it drives me crazy. And then, uh, have you seen these videos lately of these flights? Oh, dude, it's getting wild. Some guy ended up in the overhead, didn't he? That's what they said. How the fuck does that happen? I tweeted about that. I called it uh, overhead Bin Laden. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that was it. Was a lady got up in there somehow? I think. And then there was a like a. What? How does this happen? Oh, passenger stuck in overhead. What? Oh, I guess he bounced into it. Oh boy. Yeah, so I love, the, I love these buying up ads before the overhead video. <laughs> Make America great again. We're flying in overheads, guys. Come yeah, on. right. Yeah, yep. He's like, yep, but under Biden, <laughs> people weren't flying in overheads under me. Yeah. Was it even in America? I hope not. Brazil. There we go. Oh, thank God. Thank God. All right. <laughs> okay. What is this? So he, oh shit! That's some blood on the seat. They died? Oh, oh do we get video of it? Uh, I guess not. Whoa. Whoa. Out of overhead <laughs> luggage. I shouldn't be laughing, but it's kind of ridiculous. Somehow wow, getting up in yeah. there because of the turbulence. Air Europa says 30 passengers received what they call minor injuries. According to reports, Brazilian public health officials say passengers got head neck and chest injuries. Want you to listen now to one Who's of the, the passengers, passengers got head. It sounded good for a second. <laughs> Bulkhead. <laughs> didn't have seatbelts? You got to wear those seatbelts. Yeah. You know what's weird? School buses, no seatbelt. That's a good point. Isn't that strange? It's like full of children. 
<laughs> Everything's got a seatbelt. Some do. Okay. Some do, but I know I've been on the ones you're talking about where I'm like, yeah, this is weird. Yeah, the flat green, dark green seat. It's just just a bench. There's no belt. Oh, I shit my pants on the school bus in like first grade. Oh, I yeah. couldn't make it. It was in midtown traffic, and I was just I couldn't handle it. Oof. I was like, I'm not gonna make it. And I remember, uh, and I was like, ah, oh, and I just went, and and all the kids were like, no way. <laughs> and then I remember a kid just like felt my butt, and he went. He ain't faking. Oh, the saddest. It was the saddest poop on pants. Yeah, poop pants bus incident ever. Well, at least you can get on the subway and you see eight guys shitting on themselves. <laughs> so you're like, all right, I'm not alone. I shit my. Well, that, that woke Winnie up. Oh, hey, Winnie goes. I don't want to be near a poop. <laughs> she a might poop have shit. I uh, went on a field trip. I shit myself on the field trip, and then we had to get back on the bus to come home. And I remember the bus driver went. Ah, ah, and he put toilet, I mean, a newspaper down on the seat. He was like, all right, come in. It was Whoa. so humiliating. I was just. You're my, that guy now. Yeah, my fucking poo-covered ass was on the on the one ads. Tough times. Tough times, man. Hey, hey look wingy. at this nugget. <laughs> this dog just puts me in a good mood. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. Good old Wingus. Yeah, you're helping the elderly. I did. <laughs> She's so old. Oh yeah. I had the TV guy come by and he was like, he was like, that's eh, one old bird. Like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, we had a we had a Yorkshire Terrier when I was a kid. Made it to 23. And I'm like, that's like Guinness Record shit. Wow, that's crazy. That's so cute that you were shitting yourself on a bus in Manhattan. <laughs> you know, I never thought about that. Just a little kid in Manhattan, not shitting on a like, bus. Uh, <laughs> You look over, there's another kid jerking off. There's <laughs> another guy filming. <laughs> Just a bunch of degenerates. Uh, showtime, showtime. Oh, my God. Those are the be- those are the worst. Apparently, a lady on a United flight got kicked off for misgendering. Did you see that? What? Yeah. she was. It was a flight attendant. She was like, can she, uh, can you, uh, she said something, and the lady was like, it's a they, and then they kicked her off. What? Yeah, with her kids. There it is. Mid-flight. They kicked her out the fucking window. I think they wouldn't let her on. No. Oh, wow. Oof, that's tough. Oh my god. Yeah, that that's gonna be a lawsuit. United might be uh, fucked on that one. A woman identified as Jenna Longoria of Texas relayed the ordeal in a series of videos recorded at the airport and posted it to X. She explained she couldn't board a flight from San Fran to Austin with her family. I was speaking to one of the flight attendants, got their pronouns wrong. The other flight attendant didn't like it. Now, usually with a lot of these, there's some kind of extra thing they're not telling us. Usually, yeah. What else does it say? Uh, Longoria apologized, explained that she's not very well versed with pronouns. I was holding my son. He was having a temper tantrum. I had the car seat on my back. I wasn't really focusing on anything except getting my son's car seat on the flight and getting him comfortable. She alleged that the United staff accused her of a hate crime and told her she might be banned from flying with United. I feel like hate crimes used to have to earn them. Yeah. Hate crime back in the day was like, you know. It was a curb stomp. It was a a lit up crucifix on a lawn. Now it's like, oh, I made a mistake. Right, right. I misspoke. I know. That's a tough one. Oof. Oh, man, I I misgendered a guy in the crowd. Oh. I was calling him like a fucking, I I couldn't see. He just had a very, like, he sounded like a a rugby lesbian type. Sure. You know, like a kind of butch lady. I'm saying he because I found out later he was a he. Yeah, I, I kept saying and Miss, uh, what, and, he, and he he didn't correct me. Yeah. So finally I said, I, I Miss, what are you drinking? And he goes, Well, first of all, I'm a man. I was like, First of all, I've been doing this for minutes. Like even letting this happen. <laughs> what, what do you mean? First of all, I've been yeah. I've been calling you a lady for for quite some time. <laughs> it, it was kind of sad. I was... So he transitioned to a man. <laughs> no, no, he was. It was always a man. Oh, he just had kind of a. Lady uh, boy, yeah. We, oh, I mean, wow. we know people like that. Sure, sure. I mean, it's it's a dark room. I can't tell. So that's not really a. I apologize, but I was like, I mean, you know. But it wasn't a trans issue. That was just no. a, a feminine man. Oh no, yeah, I just, it was more just I couldn't identify the gender. I see. But I, I got him an IPA and <laughs> and I said, get him a pack of cigarettes for his voice too. <laughs> and some but, condoms. <laughs> and some condoms. And, yeah, and a turkey sandwich because yeah. this guy's a man right here. He's the best. Well, you know what's weird is uh, I would be the worst trans person because I have such low self-esteem, I wouldn't correct anybody. <laughs> like, if you get my name wrong, i just go with it. Yeah. You know, if you're like, hey, what's up, Mike? I'm like, hey, hey. Yeah. But if someone was like, hey, what's up, ma'am? I'd be like, hello. You know, I wouldn't <laughs> ever correct anyone because I- You get a little fan, go, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've got, got the vapors. I couldn't do it. 
Yeah. Same with the, I couldn't be a woman because I would fuck every guy out of guilt. Yeah. I wish more women were like you. I know. You'd be a good woman. I got be sad and depressed and pregnant, but I would yeah. I would be You wouldn't fuck me, I'd just be like, I'm sad. <laughs> just get away because she feels bad. I'll blow you. Just sad. Yeah. There, there was like always like one girl like that when you're young. That's one true. That would like be like, All right, let's go out back. And you're like, Yes. Yeah, the pity fuck. I remember when I was really young out and like back. in like eighth grade, <laughs> I remember there was a girl over at my friend's place and it was me and two of my friends. And they were, one of them was like kind of a prune hound. The other one was like a short fat kid with just a giant cock. Uh-huh. And then there was me. Yeah. And uh, and she uh, she was like, I'll blow all three of you. She just kind of offered it. And we were like, really? She's like, yeah. And then uh, we kind of were like in the room. We're like, well, who goes first? And we were kind of deciding it. And the first guy was like, what's well, my place? And we're like, all right. I guess, I guess it's your <laughs> your place. parents are out of town. What and about then the guests? The guests should get first. Yeah. <laughs> and we're doing like rock, paper, scissors. Oh, yeah. And I got, I drew third. Oh. So I'm like, all right, this ain't great. And then, um, you know, I had a girl I dated for like two days at a time. And I was like, I went on AOL Instant Messenger, and I was like, hey, can we break up? <laughs> so we broke up for this. And then- Wow. And then she blew the first two of them. I was in the eighth grade. I was just excited sure. at the prospect of sure. it. And she goes, I don't want to blow anymore. I was like, damn it. Uh, I just I just broke up with someone for this. Uh, oh. <laughs> but what are you going to do? You can be like, can't be like, oh, come on. Yeah. And then you tell them, tell me everything. Give me details. How was it? Because you got to jerk off to it later. But if that was you, she would have felt bad and I would have gotten sucked off. That's true. I would have done it. That's a lot of of work to blow three guys. Not not in those days. Yeah, I guess you're right. We we, we come quickly. (laughs) True, that's true. You breathe on it, we fucking come. Yeah, you got a point there. All right. Well, call in, man. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to have you. And hey, you still owe me a blowjob. That's true. (laughs) See a picture. Now that other girl will finally know why you dumped her. <laughs> She'll see this. She'll be like, ah, it was 20 years ago. I don't know what I did. I thought I was a great girlfriend. And then <laughs> We just started dating. And it was one of the things when you're a kid, we're like, let's, you know, we're like kids. We're like, let's go steady, you know? Right, right. Not, it didn't mean anything. But good on you for ending it. You kind of did the right thing. <laughs> kind of. It's a, it's a toss-up there. <laughs> I did the right thing. It's well, such a funny thing to say. You did the right thing by breaking up. You didn't right. cheat. You're but right, you also, technically. Yeah, but you also but, dumped her for a potential BJ that didn't even happen. I know. I, it's just funny to hear I did the right thing because I didn't. <laughs> what? But I did. I but technically you did. did. But you but did. Yeah. But you did. It's an interesting scenario when you break it all down. It's not bad. Now we got to talk to these two guys because I want to hear. One of them's dead. I have a joke ah. about one of them in my Netflix special is the guy we used to jack off together. Uh huh. And uh, he he fucking heroin overdose. Oh man, drugs, man. Don't yeah. do fucking drugs. No, I had two friends die heroin growing up too. It's uh, it's no joke. Yeah, but well, hey, at least he, he got blown. He was first. Yes, he got he got first BJ. There you go. And I hope he's up in heaven getting the first BJ. Amongst the angels. <laughs> I didn't speak at the funeral. <laughs> what about the second guy? What's he up to? Uh, I haven't talked to him forever. He was a character. He's a funny guy. All right. You lose touch. You're so young, man. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. Jesse, if you're listening, <laughs> would love to hear from you, buddy. Yeah. I want to know if that's how the second BJ was. Was it I'm better gonna... because she was warmed up or was it worse because she was tired? I think you want first. Oh, 100%. I think you want. I think you want the first ble- uh, beach. Yeah, because you're getting all the the effort out of the gate. Yeah, you don't want to. No one's choosing second. Right. Also, second now she's comparing the dicks, which is not good for me. <laughs> I don't want a dick comparison. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't but know. good time. Those young days with sex were so weird and awkward and fun. Yeah, you get some good stories out of it. Oh yeah, I'm trying to think. I I remember I hooked up with a girl. I, I was a virgin, and I went to a dance and hooked up with a girl after. We all slept at this guy's house, and she blew me, so I got blown before I ever got laid. Same. Yeah, which I guess is pretty normal. I think that's normal. Yeah. Third, third base comes before home. Oh, yeah, good point. So I got blown, but she wouldn't. She didn't want to have sex, which is fine. And then I got laid like a month later, and she wouldn't blow me. And I remember being like, whoa, women are weird. Oh, I can't crack the code, whatever. Yeah, well, some to, pe- to some people, that's more intimate. Yes. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know. I'll put my mouth on anything. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't to me, it's like, who gives a shit? It's the same. Right. 
It's funny it's too because I used to be a waiter and I would eat all the food that people didn't eat because yeah. I was poor. And people are like, that's so gross. I'm like, well, I'd go down on her. So why wouldn't I eat her shrimp? You know, that was my logic. I would I would eat her asshole. Might as well eat her steak leftovers. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and also it's like the people, it's the same people that will like eat butt. Yeah, and you're like, right. Who gives a shit? Exactly. Uh, I'm eating, uh, you know, so a lot of the fries. It's not like you spit on all the fries. They're individual. Yeah, I would share food with her. Yes. It's it's completely rational. I mean, I get it. it doesn't look, you look like a raccoon over the, over the you know, the garbage with the, the skillet. Yeah. And you're, you're picking at it. it. It's not a good look. But, hey, I was 19. I was broke. And I'm not buying shrimp. Yeah, shrimp is fucking great. I worked at a Mexican restaurant, so the fajita plates was my big score. We had we had fajitas in the in Rochester over the weekend. Fucking phenomenal. Oh, I haven't uh, had fajitas in like ages. The the, the smoke. The well, smell. we got we got them takeout, but yeah, oh. the, the the presentation. It's great. I heard Casa Bonita in Denver is. Oh really? Okay, good is, to know. Is this, it's the South Park guys? Oh, that's right. They bought it. Yeah, that's awesome. There's like an amusement park in there. It's it's like a city block. That place apparently. Yeah. But yeah, fajitas are great. You get the dollop of sour cream, the, the oh. guac, the pico, the cheese, the, the bed of onions. It's celebratory. It's, yes. like, it's like you don't get fajitas after you got laid off. It's like a it's like a feel good. Totally, totally. And whenever I worked at the me- the Mexican restaurant, you'd walk the fajitas down, and he had that that poof of smoke, that steam coming off, and then everybody would go, "I want fajitas." So they were like, it was a great upsell because they'd see the fajitas and they had to have fajitas. Yeah, because it's like it's like doing a dance for you. Yeah, yeah, and it was popping and crackling. Everybody loves fajitas. Yeah, good name for a kid, Fajita Norman. <laughs> Everybody loves them. <laughs> Who doesn't like fajitas? <laughs> if I was Mexican, I'd name a kid Fajita. I, I mean, that's why we went with Bodega Cat because I thought everyone liked Bodega Cat. I did some guy's show the other day. He goes, I hate cats. Whoa. And I was like, all right, he goes, I used to, I, there'd be a cat in my bodega. I would go three different stores. I'd be like, all right, well, I mean, it's the whiskey's bodega cat. And <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, sorry. You know. There's no cats in it, if that helps. Yeah. And I, I mean, who doesn't like, I mean, I understand that some people don't like cats. People hate cats. I like cats. Uh, yeah, I love them, but people. I just like animals. I'm kind of like, if you're fucking, if you're an animal that's, you know, nice at all. And what? I kind of like a rude animal too. A cat, a, yeah. Something fun about a cunty cat who's kind of who makes you earn it a little bit. Yes, exactly. Well, that's the problem is whenever someone says I don't like cats, I kind of look down on them a little bit because they're like saying I need something to greet me at the door, I need something to blow me, I need something to always be there for me and cuddle me, and if I put peanut butter on my sack, I need them to lick it <laughs> and all that. So I'm like, how about you earn it? How yeah, about put, you be put more a little fun? catnip on your sack? Yeah. No, but th- Winnie's not friendly at all. Winnie's a fucking rude. I mean, he's kind of a rude bitch, but that's true. But that's part of the, the charm. It's part of the fun. She's not really friendly to anyone. She's rude to the big dogs. She's like the uh, the, the oldest one in Golden Girls, <laughs> uh, Sophia. <laughs> Little cunty, small, old as shit. <laughs> She's so old. Uh, oh, by the man. way, in Golden Girls, you know they were like forty one or something crazy, fifties or something. Like yeah, it's so young. Mrs. Robinson is thirty seven. Wow. In the movie, thirty seven. She's supposed to be an old bag. That movie's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really tab. I mean, that was taboo. Oh yeah, he's oh, fucking. Yeah. He's fucking her mom. That is pretty crazy. It is. It's not a good move. No, but it it's a hit. I mean, it's all, every porno. Fun fact about that movie: Gene Hackman was originally Mister Robinson. Oh. and and you know Mike Nichols on that set was such a tyrant that mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman at, at lunch one day on the set was like. I suck. I'm going to get fucking fired. And Gene Hackman's like, no, I'm going to get fired. Oh. And he was right. Whoa. He was, and he, but he got fired because he was too young. Ah, I see. He was too close in age. To, he's only like, I don't know, like eight years older or 10 and years Hoffman. older than Hoffman. Yeah, yeah that's so. not good. Fun. Another fun fact, Mike Nichols, if you could pull him up, he has some rare disease where he, all your hair falls out. Lou Gehrig's disease, yeah. <laughs> and that's a piece. He had a piece when he wow. was like nine or something. Didn't know it. He, man, he was a fucking great director. But I, I was watching that Gary Shandling doc that Judd made, and I you watched know, that. Shandling hated working with him. Really? Yeah. Remember when they made What Planet Are You From? He like would be like one take, bam. He's like move on. He's like, no, I need a like riff. I'm oh like, wow. What what what's another Nichols movie? Uh fuck. This one from early seventies. Pull up Mike Nichols. He's a, 
allergic reaction to an inoculation of whooping cough. Dude, about in the DiMaggio book, Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola does the foreword. Uh-huh. I didn't know he had like uh, some sort of paralysis from polio when he was a kid. Really? DiMaggio sent him a baseball when he was Whoa. a little kid. Because he always did that for little kids. Whoa. And, uh, and he's like, I never forgot it. And it's like, man. Uh, wow. Oh, he did Wolf. You ever oh, see that one? Bad. Spader and uh, yeah, he, it's but it's fun. Bad. It's fun. He pees on the guy. Oh, he did closer. He did Birdcage. Yeah, good movies. Heartburn. Oh was, wow. What else? Oh, yeah. Galaxy Blues. Primary he did, Colors. Primary Colors. Was oh, there's fun. the Shandling one. Oh, he did Kid Stays in the Picture. That's oh, a wow. great. That's like my favorite documentary of all time. Yeah, great book too. Fucking uh, Arthur Miller. All right, he's got a he's got a couple of bangers. He was also Nichols and May, too, don't forget. That's right. Like Nichols and Elaine May. That's like how they kind of made a name for themselves. Comedy team. Wow. There you go. All right. Hold on. Go up. Go up. I saw something that grabbed my tip. There was one other in the early... Oh, Shampoo. Oh, that bombed. It did? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not Shampoo. It's another movie. Oh, okay. I thought it said Shampoo. My eyesight's fucked up. Uh -oh. oh, he did Charlie Wilson's War. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. Something's wrong with my eyes. I I don't know if I'm sleepy or what, but I usually see this a little better. Uh oh, fuck. We're dude. getting old. My my eyebrows are too thick for glasses. <laughs> really? Only I can pull them off. Yeah. That's a funny problem to have. <laughs> I think I don't know. Every time I go to the get a haircut, they're like, "You want me to cut your eyebrows?" I'm like, "Do I need it?" And they're like, "Yeah." Oh, you think you get? Do you need it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, they're just like take out fucking two edge clippers. <laughs> I don't think they're that bad. Ah, well, it's fine. It is. You just learn to accept. Uh, is that the Russian? Yourself. I guess the Russian. Oh yeah. Yeah, my uh, my grandfather had those, like the the fucking Herman Munster, the Grandpa Munster, and then he had the crazy ear hair. Oof, Tough those look. are fucking rough. Rough. Not no no woman's like. Could you get a little more ear hair? <laughs> it's disgusting. I know. He was a bald guy too, but the hair was coming out of everything except his head. Yeah. He had the big, uh, the glasses like Junior in uh, <laughs> Sopranos. I, I kind of like those. Oh, yeah. He's a cool dude. Korean War, a fighter pilot. Oh, we got some boxes here. What do you got you here? Open one. I'll right. open one. You open Thanks. the other. We're setting stuff in, folks. What's this? We might be drunk. Oh, my Whoa. God. These are fucking great. Oh, come on. We got an action figure. This is crazy. Wow. Damn. We look fucking awesome in this, dude. I love this. Whoa. Who the fuck made this? This is from Sir Collect a Lot Toys in New Hampshire. Whoa! Oh, thanks so much. I'm honored. Oh, there's a there's a note. This is fucking incredible. Look thanks at for that. all the laughs over the years. Your show means a lot to me. Hope to hope these find a nice resting place in the studio. All the best, Sir Collect a Lot. You better believe it. Let me see this. This is going up on the wall. I love it. Whoa! Do we take it out of that thing, or do we? I think we leave it. Oh yeah, let's leave it. I think we gotta leave it. We'll put. But that. no, but maybe the. But I think it looks like it's protected there too. That's the only reason they say. Oh, I see what you're saying. I don't know. Yeah, give that a give that a feel. How cool is that? Thank yeah, you. Like sir. like this, or do we leave it in there? I think you leave it in just to just to be safe. But all right, let's leave it in. You can hang that puppy up in ten minutes. All right, how cool is that? We got a toy. Now we just need a disease named after us, and we'll, we're home free. I love it, dude. So, yeah. You got road gigs? I, well, I got a new special out on Prime Video, Woo! Amazon. Check it out. You've changed. And, yeah, I'm, uh, when does this come? Yeah, I'm in uh, Miami, uh, Miami Improv in August. Nice. And uh, I think August 1st through 3rd. I'm at, uh, I'm in, I don't know. I New can't Brunswick. Remember. Yeah. Oh, so I'm in uh, Hammond, Indiana, the 27th, mm. with Chrissy D and Nimesh Patel. Nice, And I think nice. Jordan Jensen as well is on that show. Oh, fun. We got, uh, yeah, Miami, Florida, August 1st through 3rd. We got Prior Lake, Minnesota, that's also with Chrissy and uh, Nimesh. Then I'm at uh, Magoobie's Comedy Club in uh -oh. Baltimore, uh, yeah, the 15th through 17th. And then uh, New Brunswick, August 22nd through 24th then off september i'm in niagara falls in ontario and then i'm off to london september 18th uh belfast whoa uh, mama dublin paris amsterdam copenhagen oslo stockholm all over europe 
So I'll see you there, samurel.com or punchup.live slash samurel. Follow us both on those, punchup.live slash Mark Norman, punchup.live slash samurel uh, slash sign up. That's how you how you do it. Okay. But uh, yeah, Mark, where are you going to be, man? I'm, uh, as David Tell would say, I'm doing the Connecting Flights Tour. <laughs> I got Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Rockford, Illinois, Rochester, Minnesota, Hampton Bay, that's long, That's uh, the Hamptons out in Long Island, Richmond, Virginia, Greensboro, North Carolina, Anaheim, Thousand Oaks, Redding, PA, Red Bank, New Jersey, Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, St. Louis, Atlanta, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Portland, London, Ontario, and Toronto, Ontario, to name a few. So, uh... Come on out, more dates. Go to the website, punch up, get punch some more Live slash Mark Norman yes. slash sign up. Punch up dot live slash Sam Morell slash sign up or or instead of uh sign up slash uh tickets, whatever you whatever's easier. See us on the road. Uh buy Bodega Cat. Oh yeah. We love you guys for listening. Peters, you're the best. Hopefully we Hell get yeah. Salacuse back in your first crazy story soon. I want to hear Ooh, this. Don't, and, don't uh, ruin it. But yeah, we got a whopper with the cues. Keep listening. We Thank love you guys. You. Sunday's a day for my next fender. A bit of fever wreck, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon, and Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. And I get down in the same way. Up on the roof like a cop's coming, and naked Samuel is feeling dangerous. I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans. This woman doesn't look like I.